A wise man once said, never let a hard time humble us. A wise me once said, if you thought that loss was going to stop me from talking shit, you must be stupid. Anyway, I'm Little Rodney. Welcome back to the Mind Lane. So, after a loss like that, went three games though, we bounced back well enough. After a loss like that, a lot of people would feel compelled to make excuses. I'm one of those people. Excuse number one. Rook wasn't there. Now, I know a lot of people say this is why you have subs, this is whatever, but we've had four people play almost every game, almost every scrim, etc. for ZGG. On top of that, Rook is a very important part of how our bot lane operates. I've been trying to say that our bot lane, I've been trying to make up funny names for him. I call him the grinder bot lane. One, because they be grinding out leads and getting wins until they pop off. And two, because they're bottom. Anyway, though, the issue being, Rook, it's not just that Rook didn't show up. Rook didn't even let us know. So we were scrambling right before, like, yo, yo, anybody heard from Rook? Anybody heard from Rook? Getting emergency subs, you know, messaging people. If you're one of the people who caught our messages, appreciate you answering. That was rough. However, excuse number two is going to be that Rev played a good-ass game. Like, I, as much as I want to talk shit about him, they played a very specific game that uh, very much hindered our style, which was already hindered by the fact that we're not playing with our full uh, normal, with even our core period. But a very specific play style that we play is basically summed up by one of my favorite songs, by the same wise man I quoted earlier, which is We Gang Bangin' by Nipsey Hussle. Because here's what we doing. We banging on somebody. That's it. That's how we managed to get ahead all year. I know they're like, ah, can they make it with top cap, whatever, whatever. It hasn't necessarily mattered because here's been the blueprint. And the blueprint hasn't been champ picks, whatever. The blueprint has been early game. We get our top lane ahead. Maybe give a couple gangs some more resources to the top lane. Must must have got his burden on even. In the meantime, I'm shoving wave. I'm trying to attract pressure and either get their mid laner behind at a point where we can kill them or put or uh, absorb pressure from their jungler or vice versa, push out and roam. That's a, you know, a three part decision chart. Easy peasy. Right. So then we get the top lane ahead. I'm looking to roam. And then by the time the top lane is ahead, the top lane can now absorb these these pressure and win or do whatever. And we just bang on bot lane. We just bang on your fucking bot lane. Uh, you know, I might get a gank mid. Uh, normally, I don't get a gank mid. It, fuck it. They barely even want to give me fucking counter picks. Uh, fucking just setting me up for fail sometimes. But that's okay. That's part of what I signed up for. And that's honestly, that's part of my play style anyway. It's like, uh, uh, what's his name? I don't know, the, the, the 12 year old looking kid on Silver Scrapes. It was like, hey, you know, Rodney only plays like five. Uh, we'll, we'll address that later. But I mean, the real issue is that I don't play a lot of champions that require a lot of resources to be useful. So the goal is always take my usefulness and then get somebody who needs a lot of resources and give them some bonus resources, get them ahead. And then, you know, step three profit. However, a great job was done by Rev of saying, no, not only will you not be pushing in wave so you can roam with your jungler, you're going to be stuck in lane and behind. Uh, they picked uh, LeBlanc into my Tristana. Um, and uh, I'm going to make another excuse. It's excuse number three. I bought the wrong item game one. It was my fault. Um, Should have gone, uh, probably gone Kraken Slayer. Uh, maybe Shield Bow. But also, it was LeBlanc into Tristana, which is a rough matchup. And, you know, uh, Skeleton played well. I mean, he missed hella, 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 hella chains. But that's okay, because it's 2021. You should not be trying to put chains on the black man. Fuck is wrong with you. But, 
Miss Hella held the chains, whatever, whatever. But on top of that, they had the Zen Zhao, which was able to literally make it to where anytime I thought about leaving land, oh, there's motherfucking Zen Zhao. Anytime I thought about I'm going to assert pressure, there's motherfucking Zen Zhao. So it was really frustrating, and that's how you should play the game. That's how you should scout your opponents. I mean, I've done nothing but talk shit. I mean, part of, part of why I talk shit, and I'm going to be real here. Part of why the mine lane exists is to draw more attention to mid lane, at least for this split. Because the more I talk shit about how I'm going to shit on your, your mid laner, the more your mid laner is probably going to go, no, oh, don't send anybody, I want to prove I'm better than Rodney. Which means either one of two things is going to happen. Either I'm going to push them in, and then I'm going to just roam, or I'm going to force them to, to, to give me solo kills. Right? On top of which, if it's the other way, and you're like, we're going to shut this fucker up. It's the fucking Floyd Mayweather shit, where you're pay put you're putting resources into stopping me, and I'm playing half defensively anyway. I don't give a shit. Cause if you stop me, but Brave is ahead, or Psych, or uh, Chef Boy, or Pitiful, or Swag Boy is ahead, it's no problem. And that's part of the reason I've played a lot of champions who uh, offer things. Sorry, my cigar is burning unevenly, and now I'm just fucking this shit up. Uh, this is a limited reserve uh, Rocky Patel ITC that I'm fucking up. I apologize. But what I'm saying is, the whole point is to draw attention to me because I actually don't play an attention grabbing style. When I bring that attention to me, if your jungler comes, your top laner comes, whatever, every resource you put into me is something that's not going somewhere else and as long as I can absorb that pressure my team benefits that's the goal that's why I run my mouth really but if you do a good job of stopping that your team's gonna get ahead and Rev did a great job stopping that in game one um, actually did a pretty good job stopping it job stopping it all week long or all series long and and kind of the bigger issue is I had a hard time and I know this is one of the things Lepper talked to me about talked about me complimented me on and I love it because it's actually true I had a hard time keeping track of where their jungler was I'm normally very good about finding where their jungler is and if he's low making his life hard and if he's full health just kind of distracting them for a little bit maybe making the music cool down um, and then you know just going about my fucking business I didn't have that option they played really well on top of that uh, fucking excuse number four Yone is a bullshit ass champion if I ever meet the motherfucker who designed Yone I'm gonna challenge them to a square fair unified rules of boxing match and I'm gonna knock they fucking jaw off put that on whatever alright cause fuck that champion but As I'm scaling up, and I'm like, ah, I'm happy. We're excusing, you know, we're excusing, uh, exchanging, farm and what have you. Um, you know, Yon still gets super strong. Yon can't be killed. Yon takes fucking forever to kill. And if you don't kill him in one burst, he's gonna heal up with a built-in death dance. Because fuck that champion. Well played. All right. So that said, let's go down to CB rookies end of year review. First off. Shout out to Juan Cena, a.k.a. Soul Car, for filling in. Super short notice, played two games in the jungle. His Nocturne looked magnificent. I told him, man, they're not going to let you play Nocturne no more, nowhere. Looked amazing. He came through on the Sejuani. Amazing steals. That man stepped up. Second of all, shouts out to Miyuki. Came in, played the Yumi. Played well. Uh, honestly, I got shit on that game. We didn't have a lot of pressure anywhere. Um, and if there's not enough pressure and not enough CC for a, for a double ADC comp to kind of get the ADC being off, it doesn't matter how good your Yumi is. Um, secondly, again, I probably built the wrong thing. I definitely built the wrong thing. I'm not even going to try and shift that. All right. Shout out to Pitiful, who's played four roles for us, at, you know, just filled in wherever and did well and bonded with the team. Everybody on CB Rookies has been fantastic this year. Okay, shout out to Swag Money Boy. Was willing to was a is an all-star caliber, probably the best IBS jungler, and was willing to play support 
with his back against the wall to keep his team going. What a, you know, what a champ. Shout outs to Brave. Who had to deal with me constantly complaining about him, even though he did well. Honestly, I'd just be teasing him. Brave actually plays really well. Uh, he plays a lot safer than I would. A lot of people play a lot safer than I would. Um, you know, they were talking about somebody uh, on Silver Scrapes this week that plays super safe, that I have previously complained about playing super safe because it's frustrating to me. Like, I feel like you can manufacture leads. Um, and I know a lot of times I get in trouble trying to do the same thing, trying to manufacture leads when I maybe I shouldn't and should just be okay with going even. But more often than not, I come out ahead or I come out ahead with a benefit for my team. Um, so shout out to, you know, Brave and Brave was always available to do damage when needed, you know, was always available to carry if you gave him the tools needed to carry because playing 80 carry is just fucking bullshit. And in that part, I get I wouldn't want to do it no more. Um, whatever. Shout out to Rook, even though he let us down. And though he is a young man, I hope on his deathbed he remembers this shit, that he let us down. But shout out to Rook. He played, actually played really well. I know that uh, MIT, I think, or whoever was saying that they brought us in for tryouts and, you know, thought Rook didn't communicate well and yada, yada, yada. Rook was, commu by the end of this, uh, not even by the end, by week two, three, I mean, those of you who have watched our VODs know that I will make you talk um, in addition to if you don't talk, I'm going to force you to make some Rodney-ass plays. So if you're not comfortable, just fuck it. We need to be done every game by 22 minutes. We need to speed up the snowball. If you're not comfortable, you will speak up. And now you're communicating. Um, so, you know, shout out to Rook coming out of his shell, getting more confident. Shout out to everybody getting more confident, getting better. Shout out to Psych came in fucking grandmaster smurf head ass motherfucker came in played top lane obviously played top lane at a level that he's really really good he might actually be good at league of legends we don't even know yet i don't even know if he knows how good he can be at league of legends uh even shout out to chef boy uh, i know we bumped heads a lot and that's mainly because you be taking shit too seriously and you need to get some zannies my guy you need to get some zannies I want to win too. I promise you. Look, man, I'm in my 30s making content about an IBS league. Dog. I don't got shit going on but to focus on this. And you two focused on it. You know how bad that is when a motherfucker with no life and no future. Well, I mean, I got a nice future. I'm not going to lie. My retirement looking fat. But when a motherfucker with no life and literally nothing to do but this shit is looking at you like, ugh, you need to slow down. Like, bruh, just chill. Relax. Smell the roses. I understand that you, you know, everybody gets off on making their nice outplays and whatever, but bruh, it'll be cool. It'll be cool. It'll be cool. Trust me, you don't need to be 40 with high blood pressure, and when they ask why, it's because you was raging on League of Legends. It's chill. It's chill. So anyway, going to the next chapter. I don't know, but we're going to make more content here. The mind lane's not going nowhere. I'm going to still tell you who I think ain't as good as me and who I still don't think is as good as anybody else. That said... Cax, 34, 32, Blue 42, whatever the fuck your name is, you played amazingly. Skeleton, y'all know I hype Skeleton up, even if he wish is he could have sat in the seat that I sat in all year, because it was a comfortable seat. As much as I complained about not getting ganks or not getting uh, counter picks, it was a very comfortable seat to sit in where I didn't feel like I had to hard carry every game. Um, but Skeleton played well as well. Uh, and I look forward to seeing what the rest of y'all do coming up. I am very disappointed that I'm not going to get to get that season ending MIT fight because I wanted to show y'all Silver Faker. And... But obviously, I wasn't on that level because I, when needed, I didn't bring my carry pants. And honestly, I played like shit the last two weeks. So my excuse, my final excuse is that Rodney let you down. I don't even know if that's an excuse. That might be actually owning up. Whatever. But Rodney let you down. And I'll probably let you down some more. Because I'm just a man. An awesome man. But I'm just a man. That said, hopefully I let you down less coming forward. And I promise you the mind lane is only going to get deeper. It's only going to get th thinker. That ain't even a word. We making new words in the mind lane. 
because we on the next level of shit. We on the shit Webster's Dictionary ain't even thought of yet. Yeah. So stick around. It's worth it. Later, Internet. <laughs>